Oh, yes. You're listening to the Hour of the Time. And I'm William Cooper. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, all kinds of things are going on, some of them hilarious, but I'm not going to uh, get into any of that tonight. <laughs> oh, boy. Maybe tomorrow night. I forgot to inform you last night that Veritas went to press yesterday. Went to press yesterday, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, is in the mail. We spent all day today uh, putting labels on, not me. I was at a meeting. But uh, Annie and Pooh and Mike and Sharon spent all day today labeling newspapers and getting them in the mail. And Veritas is on the way to you. If you're not subscribing to Veritas, folks, you're missing. You are missing. I wondered why my voice sounded so weird there. I just found the reason. I had the wrong button pushed here on the equalizer. If you're not subscribing to Veritas, you're missing probably the best source of information. Fully documented, fully sourced, no baloney, no rumors, no crap in Veritas. Better than any publication in the country, bar none. I will stand the episodes of the Hour of the Time and Veritas up against any publication or any other radio broadcast in the world. And in a test of documentation, legitimate sources, and truthfulness, the hour of the time in Veritas will win every time. Every single time, ladies and gentlemen, without any doubt. Of course, if you want to stick to the so-called Patriot Facts Network, or if you want to get reports like we're flying around yesterday, or I should say last night and today, in Oklahoma, you see Tinker Air Force Base went on alert. <laughs> And uh, the militia of Montana heard about it and started sending out faxes and notifying people across the country that Tinker Air Force Base was on red alert because they were going to transfer Nichols and McVeigh to the new venue. And just like the militia of Montana <laughs> always does, they were promoting... Pure, unadulterated, unsubstantiated, undocumented, unproof bullshit. You see, the hearings to decide the venue for the trial just started today, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> there has been no decision made. But according to Larry Myers of Media Bypass, the trial is going to be held in Tulsa. <laughs> Oh, you slay me, folks. You just slay me. Last night, I got a call from a guy in full-blown panic. Full-blown panic. Tinker Air Force Base is on red alert. You got to you gotta put the militia on alert. Folks, it only required one telephone call. Tinker Air Force Base was on alert for their yearly... Security exercises to test the security force of the Air Police of Tinker Air Force Base to detect intruders. They do it every year. Also got another call last night from a, another person in full-blown panic. This was after the show. I was sitting downstairs trying to unwind and uh, think about some things. And then I was going to come up here and do some work on the computer. And then I was going to go to bed. He said, quick, turn on the Hingston show, which I just not too long ago discovered follows my broadcast on the satellite. And I said, why? What's the matter? He says, they're doing it in Texas right now. Texas is succeeding from the union right now. They've already done it. It's a done deal. They got their own court system and everything. 
Well, I told him to calm down, and I told him with no hesitation, without even checking whatsoever, based upon what we've already know about this Republic of Texas crap, that it was total bullshit. And then I went back upstairs and turned on the uh, Hinkson show, and I never heard such a such a conglomeration of deluded, fantasy-ridden people spouting the most outlandish crap I've ever heard in my life. And apparently many of you out there are eating it up. Well, for those of you who don't want to be misled by all the Looney Tunes people that are out there and all the disinformation agents and the Trojan horses and the Hegelian dialectic provocateurs, you stay tuned to the hour of the time and you subscribe to Veritas. And to round out your education and make sure that you're not missing anything, you should listen to everybody in the whole world, bar none, even the Looney Tunes. And you should read everything you can possibly absorb. But don't. Don't ever believe anything, no matter how good it sounds, no matter how good it feels, no matter who says it, unless you can prove it, document it, substantiate it, source it. If you can't do that, if you can't do that, folks, you're always going to be a puppet on the end of somebody's string. And when they pull that string, you're always going to dance. Always. Because that's what puppets do. Go watch Pinocchio again. It's about a dumb, wooden-headed sheeple that after going through the experience of life, found out how stupid and wrong he had been and became a real people. Remember what I've been telling you about Disney? When are you going to wake up? Huh? <laughs> oh, yes. Love is on the air tonight. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't bother with you. I hope you understand that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even attempt to help you if I didn't care about you. That you better understand because what I do is uh, not good for me. It's good and good for my family. In the long run, it might be good for all of us, I hope. Remember uh, Tommy What's-His-Name and Treasury Gate? How many of you fell for that? Yeah, just some old guy, just regular old guy, all of a sudden bumps into this dude from Singapore <laughs> who gives him all these trillions of dollars of bank certificates. And he had you running around chasing your tails for how many months? Or was it more than a year? And Jay Swashinger and the agricultural suit. Remember, Delta Force was in Europe scarfing up all the gold and bringing it back, and the uh, Federal Reserve had been bought back by the federal government, and for just $300, when this is all finished and we win our case, you'll all get millions. How many of you fell for that? Oh, don't try to, don't try to bullshit me, because I know an awful lot of you fell for it. What else are you falling for? <laughs> Veritas. If you don't have a subscription, get one. It's $35 for 24 issues. It'll be the best $35 you ever spent, ladies and gentlemen. If you'd like to subscribe, make your check or money order payable to Image, I-M-A-G-E, 1216. That's Image, 1216. If you make it out to anything else, we'll have to send it back to you. Make a check or money order payable to image 1216. And then send it to, that means address the envelope to Veritas. And the reason I say that is because a lot of people kept sending checks to the one I said send to instead of the one I said make payable to. And when we asked them about it, they said, well... We thought you said make payable to, but then you said send to, so we corrected it. <laughs> Remember
Make your checks or money orders payable to Image 1216. Put the check or money order in an envelope and send it to, address the envelope to, Veritas. Post Office Box 3390. That's P.O. Box 3390. St. John's, Arizona, 85936. And don't forget, folks, if, you, you know, if you're listening to the radio and you write down an address and you don't get the town or the state or you don't know how to spell it, it doesn't matter as long as you have the zip code correct. If you have the zip code, it's going to get there because that's all they look at. Veritas, Post Office Box 3390, St. John's, Arizona, 85936. This issue... It's just incredible. You know, I was surprised when I saw it. I had no really, I had really not much input into this, except I dealt with some of the authors of some of the articles, and I selected some of the articles, and I did some editing, and I faxed these to Mike, who then literally, with his wife Sharon, made this issue of the paper. So when I finally saw it, this morning, I was really, really pleased. This is an outstanding issue. One of the best we've ever done. The headline story, America Outraged. Michael New found guilty. Bad conduct discharge. You probably all know it by now. That Michael New was found guilty and received a punishment of a bad conduct discharge. I think I announced that over the year when it happened. The United Nations leader proposes global taxation. And then we have printed the Bill Clinton letter. The title of that article is This Man Sent Your Children to Bosnia. And we printed his letter thanking his ROTC instructor for getting him out of the draft. (laughs) There's a good story in here about a county assessor in Cheyenne, Wyoming who has absolutely refused to comply with an IRS summons which breaks the law of Wyoming. There's an article here that was going to be the headline article. You've all seen the movies. I know you have, where they've got their stories and everything's laid out and the presses start rolling and all of a sudden somebody runs in and whispers in somebody's ear and he yells, Stop the presses! Well, that's what we did. We had another headline story. The title of that was Throw the Bums Out. When all of a sudden we received the results of the new court-martial and we yelled, Stop the presses! (laughs) Just like the movies. Uh, Only, unlike the movies, it's not fun to do that. It's expensive and it causes more work. But we had to do it because that really is the headline story. And that's what should have been the headline story once we knew about it. So we did stop the presses and redo the front page. Throw the Bums Out is an excellent article on how to do research on politicians and literally throw them out of office. It's an incredible article written by Jay Orlin Grady, or Grab. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce his name. It's an exclusive from the Kaji News Service. And uh, an in-depth look into the intelligence community and not what I gave you on the air either. <laughs> nope, it's a lot more. Letters to the editor. Bye-bye National Parks. Hello, you in Biosphere Reserve. A book review on unintended consequences which you all must obtain and read. You won't believe it. It's a work of fiction based upon actual real events that are occurring here in the United States and have occurred. And every single person in this nation who cares about freedom had better read that book. It's called Unintended Consequences by Ven Suprinowitz. The course is another excellent column on health and nutrition. Continuation of Joe's Bellyache by Ann Houston, registered nurse. Did you know that there are no lawyers in the state of California? 
not according to the law. And there's an article explaining that. Good editorial by Joyce Rosenwald entitled Boys in Blue, Who Do You Serve? Directed straight at the heart and soul of the police departments across this country. White House press releases. President Clinton declares major disaster in Minnesota. Clinton declares major disaster in South Dakota. Continuation of the Libyan emergency. Executive order. Establishing the Armed Forces Service Medal. Executive order for peacekeepers. Religious Freedom Day, January 16, 1996. A proclamation. Two letters. One to the National Rifle Association and one to the Firearms Coalition, both sent by Aaron Zellman, the Executive Director of the Jews for the Preservation of Firearms Ownership. And these letters will set you straight about these organizations and what they've been doing. A fantastic opinion article by Judy Hunter Kimball about United We Stand and those people who backed Ross Perot. You see, she was one of them who fell right into it. And she talks about all the lessons that she learned and what it's really about and how she woke up from being a sheeple and became a real person. There's a story about the Immigration and Naturalization Service practicing emergency border exercises. And the Texas National Guard's participation in the counter-drug program. You'll be amazed at what that tells you. And about two pages or a page and a half of quotes regarding the individual right to keep and bear arms. These are quotes of the Founding Fathers, commentators, respected publications. All kinds of stuff. The Army Intelligence Organizations. The Air Intelligence Agency. The Advanced Technology Demonstration Network, or ATDNet. An article on the director of the National Security Agency, Vice Admiral J.M. McConnell, United States Navy. And so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. If you'd like to subscribe, ladies and gentlemen, remember, if you want a copy of the current issue that just came off the presses, it's $3 until the next issue comes out. All back issues. So once the next issue comes out, this will be a back issue. All back issues are $5 a copy. All current issues are $3 per copy. Mail, I believe. I think that's correct. <clears throat> and uh, you can get it before the next issue comes out by sending $3. It's best to subscribe. You save money by subscribing. 24 issues for $35 is the best deal, the best rate. If you would like to subscribe to Veritas, make your check or money order payable to Image 1216. Put it in an envelope and address the envelope to Veritas. Veritas is spelled V as in Victor, E-R-I-T-A-S, Veritas. Post Office Box 3390, 3390, St. John's, Arizona, 85936. We also have some back issues available for those of you who did not get those issues. Let me see if I can find the page here, and I'll tell you exactly what we have available. Uh, we have, and I'm not on the page yet. My goodness, there it is. We have available as back issues. What did I do? Missed the whole thing? Ah, here it is. We have available as back issues, issue number two, 
of April the 5th, 1995. Issue number five of August 1995. Well, let me tell you what's in these. Issue number two. We have available back issue number two of April 5th, 1995. And here are the articles that were contained in that issue, or the major articles anyway. The Conference of the States busted. Militias and patriots terrorized. Citizens of the American Republic. The Plunging Dollar, Fact or Fiction, Part 1. List to contact your representatives. And when I say list, ladies and gentlemen, it's no joke. I mean list. <laughs> All of their addresses, phone numbers, fax numbers, everything. Of the Senate and the House. The Crimes of Mina, Clinton and the Cult of Intelligence. Don't Forget Your Water. The Obelisk and its Relatives. That's the Symbology column, which, by the way, probably won't be running anymore. Worldview Editorial. Liberals and Conservatives Are Not Enemies. Big Brother, A Reality in Socialist Britain. By Definition, Who Are You? Omnibus Counterterrorism Bill. Marxist New Left Dominates American Colleges, and Ambassador Signs Treaty. Issue number five of August 1995, Fort Knox Empty. That was the headline story. GSA Auction Yields $10,000 Gold Note. Wake Up America, How Money System Really Works. It is the best explanation I have ever seen in my life. And I did not write it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Lawful money. Pictorial evolution of paper money. Probably the best article ever done on the pictorial evolution of paper money and how the contract on the face of the paper has changed over a period of time, making it literally worthless. July 2nd and John Adams, the unsung founder. Tarot cards, the fool and Jack, the symbology column. Lemon water for, lemon water for our health. Law and treason in the federal government. Assault coffee, anyone? County orders. Take medicine or face arrest. Many Russians face future rights abuse. And in issue number seven of October, November 1995, New says no to UN Blue. Weather modification. Proof positive. Confidential memorandum exposed. Washington State says no to New World Order with House Resolution. Louis Farrakhan's message to black men at the Million Man March. It's the entire text, the entire text, from the first word out of his mouth until the last with nothing missing. IRS blocks MENA probe. Digestion, the beginning of good health. Who is Jack Sheffer? which is the symbology column again, the Great Militia, and an armed neighborhood. Issue number 8, December 1995. The headline story was, I Buried My Heart. The United Nations Withdrawal Act. Clinton declares national emergency. It's the law, the Corny Jack of April 2nd, 1792. The Senate's Waco investigation. Titles of the United States Code. United Nations Article 43, never ratified. Do you know that the law that the president quotes, that he says allows him to send our troops to Bosnia and to Macedonia and to Haiti and all of these places under the UN, or on behalf of the UN, is not law at all. It's based upon the authority given by Article 43 of the United Nations Charter, which was vetoed by the Soviet Union and the United States, was never ratified, is not a part of the United Nations Charter, and was never ratified by the Senate of the United States. Were you aware of that? Well, that's what that article explained. You and Article 43 was never ratified. FBI demands phone tap capability. Joe's Belliac, the inside story. The swastika and the cross which is the symbology column again. And uh, an article on Mikhail Gorbachev and what he's up to today. Issue number nine, January 96, IRS stops random audits. That was a result, ladies and gentlemen, of the expose on the Internal Revenue Service 
and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms that we did in issue number six of Veritas. The result of our expose is that the IRS stopped all random audits and began an investigation of their own historian from whom we got an awful lot of the material that was in that article. My son took an oath. Michael New's father backs him all the way. Black budget programs. The entire outline of all of the black budget programs that we were able to find that were funded in 1995. Gap dead. How many of you knew Gap is dead? The World Trade Organization is now in charge. Editorial, NATO, and other treaties. A book review, Red Earth, White Lies. All of the bugging frequencies for bugging telephones, rooms, automobiles, and includes both radio frequency and television. Joe's Bellyache, The Continuing Saga, a story on the jackboot fits, and they will wear it. Email addresses and websites of the 104th Congress, all of the senators, all of the representatives that have email addresses and websites, and that's not all. There are other websites and email addresses of things that have to do with Congress and with legislation and with uh, all of voting records and all of that stuff. Government's Statement on Concealed Weapons Law. Network for World Control. And a whole bunch of United Nations news. So that's uh, what we have is available as back issues is issue number two, number five, number seven, number eight, and number nine. That's it. And we only have limited supplies. So if you want any of those copies of the back issues of Veritas, send your money in now is five dollars per copy if you want the current issue that just came off the presses it's three dollars if you don't have a subscription if you have a description a description a subscription watch your mailbox and then you will see in there a solid description <laughs> of what's going on in this country and the world we also did reprints of the two most popular issues that we've ever had which was issue number one, which was a collector's item. Very few were printed. It was the first issue. We didn't have any subscribers. We didn't have anything. And people who got that issue, that's a collector's item, and someday it's going to be worth a lot of money. In fact, all of these early issues might end up being worth a lot of money. Now, the difference between an actual issue and a reprint is the reprint does not have the blue masthead or the blue stripe at the bottom of the paper. The reprints are all black. We did that to preserve, ladies and gentlemen, the value of the original issue number one and any other issue that we reprint. Nobody can pass them off as being original editions of Veritas. They're reprints. And not only that, on every page, it says reprint. It says reprint right at the top of the front page. So, um, we've reprinted issue number one, which, by the way, is the issue that has about five or six full pages. Now, remember, this is not a newsletter. This is not a tabloid. This is a full-size, regular newspaper just like the Washington Post or the New York Times or the Los Angeles Times or the Chicago Tribune or the rest of them. Not as thick, mind you, but just as big and about 5,000% more truthful. <laughs> so when I say over five pages of nothing but solid quotes which absolutely prove out of their own mouths what they are doing. And they are directly sourced as to who said it and in most instances where and when. For instance, now remember I'm talking about over five pages of this in issue number one. People went bananas when they saw it. You see, we put it all there so that you could see it. Just the quotes. 
1994, it, the New World Order, cannot happen without U.S. participation, as we are the most significant single component. Yes, there will be a New World Order, and it will force the United States to change its perceptions. Who said it? Henry Kissinger, at a conference at the Wilshire Beverly Regent Hotel on April 19, 1994. Nineteen ninety three. Agreement was widespread for the creation of a new international order. A new world order could come about only through concrete steps agreed by the vast majority of the international community, said Foreign Minister Muhammad Sadiq Khan Kanju of Pakistan. The UN was the only forum where we can concert our actions to construct new arrangements for global peace and prosperity. In conclusion, Eduardo Filero, Minister of State for External Affairs of India, pointed out that, quote, what we need to work for is a new international order free from war, poverty, illiteracy, and injustice. Where did that come from? The United Nations Chronicle, United Nations, Department of Public Information, Volume 30, Number 1, March 1993. 1992. Henry Kissinger, former United States Secretary of State, founding member of the Trilateral Commission, former National Security Advisor, etc., quote, Today, Americans would be outraged if United Nations troops entered Los Angeles to restore order. Tomorrow, they will be grateful. This is especially true if they were told that there were an outside threat from beyond, whether real or promulgated, that threatened our very existence. It is then that all peoples of the world will plead to deliver them from this evil. The one thing every man fears is the unknown. When presented with this scenario, individual rights will be willingly relinquished for the guarantee of their well-being granted to them by the world government, end quote. Henry Kissinger said that in Avian, France, May 21, 1992, describing his vision of the chain of events which will bring about their new world order. What is this outside threat from beyond? What do you think, folks? It's, you know, that cute little dude called E.T.? <laughs> That's who it is. 1992, United Nations creating a standing army under the control of the United Nations Security Council would give the World Organization a military punch it has never had before and could convert it into a full-time international police department. And it goes on and on and on and on. It was said by Norman Kimster in the Los Angeles Times, February 1st, page A6. Now I'm just reading you little quotes selected at random from these pages. And there's over five pages of these quotes in issue number one, which we just reprinted. If you want to copy the reprint, five bucks. 1989, President George Bush at Texas A&M University on May 12th, 1989, a commencement address. Quote, Ultimately, our objective is to welcome the Soviet Union back into the world order. Perhaps the world order of the future will truly be a family of nations, end quote. What's the source? Arizona Daily Star, May 12, 1989. 1980, Ford Foundation President H. Rowan Gaither said this, quote, the substance of these directives was to the effect that we should make every effort to so alter life in the United States as to make possible a comfortable merger with the Soviet Union. Who said it? Norman Dodd reported that in a videotaped interview of the Hidden Agenda Merging America into World Government, Westlake Village, California, American Media, one hour on VHS. Nineteen seventy seven. International communism of the Moscow order has many features in common with David Rockefeller's Trilateral Commission, such as undermining the national sovereignty of the United States. It is for this reason, plus others, that one finds known Marxists supporting the goals of the New World Economic Order sought by the Trilateral Commission. End quote. That was in the Review of the News, Weekly Review, England, October twelfth, nineteen seventy seven, on page forty five. 1974, quote, in short, the house of the world order will have to be built from the bottom up rather than from the top down, and end run around national sovereignty, eroding it piece by piece, will accomplish much more than the old-fashioned assault. 
End quote. Who said that? Gardner, a Rhodes Scholar, was appointed as United States Ambassador to Spain by fellow Rhodes Scholar Bill Clinton. It was stated by Richard N. Gardner in a publication a publication of the Council on Foreign Relations entitled Foreign Affairs, the April 1974 edition. In 1965, unification of the Army, Navy, and Air Force under a single Chief of Staff advanced repeatedly after 1945 as the avenue to a stronger and more efficient military establishment, never won the support of Congress, Direction and control of the armed services became increasingly centralized. Congress and the nation, a review of government and politics in the post-war years, Congressional Quarterly Service, Washington, D.C., 1965. And on, and on, and on, and on. And I'm not even picking out the real good ones, folks. Because to tell you the truth, I forgot exactly where they are. I'm just going through picking stuff. At random. At random. Sorry about that. I hit the microphone with the uh, the newspaper. 1950. Harry Truman said this in Our Foreign Policy, Department of State, Publication 3972, page 4. Quote, there is no longer any real distinction between domestic and foreign affairs. End quote. Harry Truman said this in our foreign policy. Department of State Publication 3972, page 16, in 1950. Quote, To that end, they began to plan and build an international community in which people could live in peace under the protection of law. The building of such a community is the most ambitious, the most difficult, the most hopeful, and the most exciting enterprise on which the American people have ever embarked. It is big enough and hard enough to engage all our energies. If it were not for the threat of aggression, we could concentrate all our energies on that job. We could say that it was, in fact, the substance of our foreign policy. Just like I always told you. In 1950, Harry Truman said in our foreign policy, Department of State, Publication 3972, page 18, quote, To this end, we have helped to write an international charter of fair trade practices and to create an international trade organization where the nations can settle disputes across a conference table. It was known as GATT. GATT was not new. It was done way back in the late 40s, and you didn't even know about it. And he goes on, through reciprocal trade and tariff agreements, we are gradually opening up the channels of world trade that have been clogged for a generation. Listen to this. All this is only the bare outline of an international community. Nobody can predict where the experiment will lead or how long it will take. It may, in time, lead to the international control of all armament, which is essential it may lead eventually to a form of world government, which is a possibility that excites the imagination of some adventurous people. Harry Truman, 33rd degree Freemason, traitor par excellence. Why do you think the liberal establishment, when they came to power in Washington, D.C., all of a sudden elevated Harry Truman to the status of national hero? They know what's going on. 1950. Harry Truman. The United Nations has no lawmaking powers. It has no enforcement powers. The Charter did not contemplate an international police force, but it did provide that the Security Council should have military forces in the form of national contingents at its disposal. All United Nations members, said the Charter, were to contribute contingents by agreement with the Security Council. End quote. Harry Truman. The only problem is, ladies and gentlemen, is the Soviets and the United States vetoed that. You can go on and on and on. Pages and pages. In fact, the quotes begin in 1776 and end, I believe, in 1995. 
because this paper was printed in 1995. 1850, Abraham Lincoln, quote, I see in the near future a crisis approaching that unnerves me and causes me to tremble for the safety of my country. Corporations have been enthroned. An era of corruption in high places will follow, and the money power of the country will endeavor to prolong its reign by working upon the prejudices of the people until the wealth is aggregated in a few hands and the republic is destroyed. It was published by Dallas Plemons and the Illuminati. nineteen thirteen, President Wilson in his book in his book, The New Freedom, wrote this quote, Some of the biggest men in the United States in the field of commerce and manufacture are afraid of something. They know that there is a power somewhere so organized, so subtle, so watchful, so interlocked, so complete, so pervasive, that they had better not speak above their breath when they speak in condemnation of it, end quote. 1920, Winston Churchill said this, quote, From the days of Spartacus, Weishaupt, to those of Karl Marx, to those of Trotsky, this worldwide conspiracy for the overthrow of civilization has been steadily growing. Published February the 8th, 1920, in the illustrated Sunday Herald. 1928, quote, as early as the autumn of 1914, Wilson said, when looking ahead to the end of the war, all nations must be absorbed into some great association of nations. End quote. Guess who said that? President Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. nineteen twenty nine, William T. Still, in his book The New World Order, says, quote, the leaders of America's new secret society, the Council on Foreign Relations, engineered the great crash of nineteen twenty nine. On and on and on and on and on. 1935, annual message to the Congress, January January fourth. 1935, Theodore Roosevelt said this, quote, We have undertaken a new order of things, yet we progress to it under the framework and in the spirit and intent of the American Constitution. We have proceeded throughout the nation a measurable distance on the road toward this new world order. End quote. He's the one who began socialism in this country. He's the one who began to make the people dependent upon the government for their very existence. The new order that he was talking about has nothing to do, ladies and gentlemen, with the Constitution. Anyway, that's issue number one. Lazy Majesty is an expose of the treason that's been committed in this country that has brought us to the point where we were at. An open letter. Preview of the year. A lesson from Mexico's economy. A critique of a couple of articles that appeared in the Soldier of Fortune, setting them straight on the truth about gun control. And the second article in amendment. The first symbology column. Art on a Landscape of Nicholas Poussin. Now, I got a, several letters chastising me for publishing an art column in Veritas. Number one, I'm not interested. The paper belongs to us. We'll publish in it what we damn well please. And you should have known, those of you who wrote those letters, that I wouldn't just publish an art column. If you know anything about what's happening and who's behind it, you'll know that the painting on a landscape by Nicholas Poussin has an awful lot to do with an awful lot of things. 
one of the greatest deceptions that there is. The first health and nutrition column appeared in this issue. Now, issue number six. Issue number six was the granddaddy of all. You see, we didn't publish many copies of uh, issue number one. But we published a lot of uh, copies of issue number six, and every single one of them disappeared. I mean, like that. So we reprinted it. That's the one that ran the headline story expose of the Bureau of Alcohol and Tobacco and Firearms and the Internal Revenue Service. It's the first time that anybody's ever told the real truth about those organizations and documented their history and the fact that they're really one organization operating illegally, unconstitutionally, unlawfully. They are agents of a foreign power. They are not agencies of the United States government or the Treasury Department, and they are not listed in the law in the organization of the Treasury Department. Customs is. Coast Guard is. The legitimate agencies are but not the BATF, not the Internal Revenue Service, and not the Secret Service. The Secret Service, ladies and gentlemen, was formed from a contingent of the Pinkerton Detective Agency. Did you know that? Well, I know it. And one of these days, we're going to write a headline article exposing those scumbags, too. How about that? Didn't know you were going to get such good stuff tonight, did you? Well, you did. <laughs> oh, you can be taller than she is. And wherever Esther makes you taller, it is ever elevation. She'll look up to you when you are taller. You can say goodbye to all your blue. Now you can be taller than she is. Here's all you have to do. Just get yourself a lift in Adler, Adler, Adler Elevator Shoes. It's not always your height that counts, men. It's the way other men look at you. Don't let them look down on you. Step into Adler Elevator Shoes and step up in the world. You'll be almost two inches taller instantly. You'll stand straighter, look better, and command the respect you're entitled to. You're taller comfortably and confidentially, for the heels are no higher. Smart men are going up in the world. So don't just wish you were taller. Do something about it. And get yourself a lift in Adler, Adler Elevator Shoes today. I love to do that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Hour of the Times brought to you by Swiss America Trading, my good friend, Craig Smith, Frank, all the other good people down there. Remember, you can hear Frank every Thursday night, right here, on the Hour of the Time. That's day after tomorrow, I believe. And uh, I don't know how many of you have, you see... It used to be easy to get your hands on a silver dollar. Everybody had some. Most people had a cigar box with a whole bunch of silver dollars in them. And everybody's grandmother or grandfather saved old coins and, you know, sort of passed them along to the grandchildren or the children at some point in time. And, of course, everybody that ever went to Las Vegas came back with a whole suitcase full of silver dollars if they were lucky. If they were lucky, which most people were. But you know something, until I actually bought one in my whole entire life, I had never seen a gold coin. Never never even seen one. I'd seen pictures of them, but I'd never seen a, a gold coin in my whole life until I purchased one. And I was amazed, held it in my hand, at how heavy it was and how beautiful it was. Gold... And I'm talking about a high-quality gold. I'm not talking about this 10-carat or 14-carat stuff. That's not real gold. That was a, uh, a degradation of the metal in order for jewelers to make more money out of the gold that they had on hand. That's the truth of that. There's also a way to make jewelry for people who were hard on jewelry because it wasn't as soft as the purer gold. The higher the number, the greater the purity of the gold. For instance, 24 carat is 
has more gold and is purer than 22 carat, than 18 carat, than 14 carat, than 10 carat, if you know what I'm talking about. The gold coin is a magnificent thing to look at and to hold and to see, and once you see it and hold it, you know why it has value. It has intrinsic value, which means it can be used for other things besides money, and it is rare. With the uh, continued advance in technology, gold and silver will be in more demand because they're used as coatings and then points of contact and electrical components to make sure that it doesn't corrode and interfere with the electrical current or the, or the proper operation of the equipment or cause a failure at a bad time. You see, because gold does not corrode. And it's one of the best conductors of electricity that exists. Silver is used in photography and a lot of other things. Now, the need for silver in photography, eventually, I can tell you right now, as they perfect this digital tool, photography is going to decline. But there will be uses for silver in other technologies. But silver will always have value. You see, silver is real, real, lawful money. Always has been in this country. Gold and silver coin are constitutional money. You don't want to get caught with your pants down if the paper fails. If the paper fails, nobody's going to want it. No matter how many wheelbarrows full of it you have, they're not going to want it. Because, let's face it, folks, it's worthless. It does not have intrinsic value. You cannot use it for other things. Nobody gets a good feeling when they hold a dollar bill like they do when they hold a silver dollar or a gold coin. So call 1-800-289-2646. Talk to Frank. Tell him you want to get your hands on some real money. Ask him how you can do it. And don't be afraid to say, hey, I'm one of these guys that doesn't make a lot of money. I just have a little bit. How can I buy maybe a silver dollar now and a silver dollar in two or three weeks or a month or maybe a $10 gold piece this month and maybe a $10 gold piece two months from now? Don't be afraid to say that. Nobody's going to laugh at you. Folks, I've been there a lot. And right now in my bank account, there is zip, zilch, nothing. Our refrigerator broke, so we had to buy a new one. And then our Bronco broke down. It cost us $1,200 to get it fixed. That was all the money we had. We don't have anything right now, not nothing. Zero, zip, zilch. So, if I can tell you that on the air, if you're in that situation, don't be embarrassed to tell Frank about it and work out a way that you can get your hands on some real money so that you're not caught and destroyed by what's going to come down the pike here in the next few years. Remember, this is a totalitarian socialist New World Order. And it cannot exist unless they destroy the middle class. There must be an economic collapse and it's going to happen. We're set up for it. Oh man, are we set up for it. We are probably the biggest sucker nation that's ever existed on the face of this earth. With the best education, the best brains, <laughs> and absolutely... Absolutely no wisdom. Remember, folks, issue number one and six has been reprinted. Those are classic issues. Five dollars a piece. The other issues that we have that are back issues you can order, those are the original issues with the blue on the front page. And issue number ten is in the mail, on the way to you as we speak, and on the way to everybody in Washington, D.C. right now. If you'd like to make sure you get the next issue and the next 23 after that, subscribe. Make check or money order for $35 for 24 issues payable to image 1216. Put it in an envelope 
Address the envelope to Veritas, P.O. Box 3390, St. John's, Arizona, 85936. Good night, ladies and gentlemen, and God bless each and every single one of you. Thank you.